would you say is the biggest obstacle that you've faced in your career? And how did you overcome that? I think that? there's lots of, um, lots of challenges that I faced, like hurdles along the way. I don't know that any one was more significant than another. And more importantly, I think when I look back on a lot of them, you know, once you gain that experience, right, of going through something tough, you think, oh, that was just a really great learning experience. I'm grateful for it. I mean, you know, nothing, nothing has happened that's, nothing would, so insurmountable that, you know, I think, wow, that one really, you know, knocked me out. Um, but I think something just personally on a high level that I've, I've been challenged with, and I think it has a lot to do with my personality and just sort of the way the world works is, I really consider myself, I think people sort of want to label me as an expert, right? I have a PhD in political science. I, I do leadership work. So people want to sort of pigeonhole you as an expert in a particular thing. And, and that can be really flattering. But, but personally, I feel much more like a hub type person, you know? I always say, like, in praise of the generalist, I think of myself as someone who's interested in a lot of different areas, not just any one particular thing. And so even within leadership, I do everything from like vision setting to emotional intelligence to personal leadership. And there's not one particular thing that I think I'm stronger at. And I think that that can be great, you know, because I'm always sort of doing interesting things and jumping from, you know, various cool ideas to other, you know, cool ideas and projects. But I think it's hard because we live in a society that really values specialists, I think. And so people are always, you know, I think it, it can be really great if you can kind of pigeonhole yourself as a specialist. And so I found early in my career, because I was so much of a generalist, it was hard when a project came up that required maybe um, someone who was labeled as an expert. Like We want someone who very specifically does data analytics. And I'd be like, well, I do that too, but, but I did other things. And so someone who was strictly just in data would get that job. Or we want someone who does operations. Well, I do strategy too. So, you know, so someone who did just strictly operations would pick that up. But what I found is that even though in the short run, I think there were some opportunities that weren't available to me because of that. In the long run, I was the person that got called when people had no idea what to do or what yeah. they did. They were like, this is like Danielle problem. will know what to do. <laughs> yes. Let's just bring her in. She'll figure out a way. And, and you know what? In the long run, those are the problems I was most interested in working on anyway. So it worked out really well, but I think I struggled with it for many years. And then I also felt like, am I letting down like the other academics by kind of dabbling in this applied world of, you know, that's beyond just the ivory tower. And, and that's, you know, ultimately what I had to do because it was authentic and it was what interested me. Um, but I think it was certainly a, a persistent challenge for many years and, and probably still is in, in ways that I have yet to discover.